Get started with Entity Framework Core with our online course. Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned as in part one, we will look at setting up and configuring EF Core in an ASP.NET Core app. Before we get started, we need to ensure that we've got some software installed on our machine. For this course, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2022 and specifically the Community Edition. You can, of course, use Visual Studio Code if that's your preferred choice. If you're using Visual Studio, ensure that it's version 17.8 or above. To check that, go to Help and check for updates. Ensure that the current version is 17.8 or above. If it isn't, just go ahead and do an update. Installing or updating Visual Studio should download the .NET 8 SDK, which is what we're going to be using in this course. To check that, open a PowerShell window and run .NET-list-SDKs. If there's a version installed that begins with 8 or higher, you should be OK. If the .NET 8 SDK is not installed, you'll need to install it. Just make sure that it's the SDK that you're installing and not the runtime. There's a list of installers and binaries available for each of the operating systems. Just make sure that you've got the Visual Studio version downloaded that it's supported for the SDK. You also need to make sure that local DB from SQL Server has been installed. You can do that in Visual Studio, so you go to Tools, Get Tools and Features. This loads up the Visual Studio installer. If we go into the Individual Components tab and do a search for local DB. Make sure that SQL Server Express Local DB is ticked, and if it's not, go ahead and tick it and install it. Time to create our project in Visual Studio. Let's create a new project and do a search for Web API. We're going to select ASP.NET Core Web API, and we're going to give the project name roundthecode.efcore. We'll leave these settings as they are and create the project. One thing we need to do is edit the project file and we need to remove this line. Invariant globalization seems to be causing issues with Entity Framework Core, so we're going to remove it for this course. Next, we're going to add a class library to our solution. So we right click on the solution, go to Add a New Project. We're going to do a search for Class Library and select the Class Library template, which we're going to call roundthecode.efcore.infrastructure. Select the framework as .NET 8 and create the project. With our web API, we want to add a dependency to the infrastructure project. Right click on dependencies and go to add project reference. Select round the code.efcore.infrastructure and press OK. The web API now has a dependency on the infrastructure project. If we go into program.cs, we want to import that namespace. So we go for using round the code.efcore.infrastructure. Don't worry too much if you're getting an exception at the moment, as we'll resolve that when we create the DB context. In order to add Entity Framework Core to our project, we need to add some NuGet packages. So we go to Tools, NuGet Package, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. We're going to do a search for Microsoft.Entity Framework Core. Select Entity Framework Core, and we're going to install it into the efcore.infrastructure project. We also need to add SQL Server, so we do a search for Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. Again, we'll install it on the EF Core.infrastructure. And we also need to do the same for tools, so we do a search for Entity Framework Core.tools. Again, install it on the infrastructure project and install it. Before we set up Entity Framework in our project, we want to create a database for it. If you're familiar with Entity Framework and migrations, you know you can create the database through that. But we're going to do it manually, so we're going to go to View, SQL Server Object Explorer in Visual Studio. We can see we've got an instance of our local DB database, and we've got our databases, so we're going to create our database. We're going to call it roundthecode.efcore. Next, we need to add our connection string to our appsettings.development.json file. We'll put it in a parent connection strings key and a child round the code EF Core DB context. 
The server is the server name of our local DB, which we can get from View, SQL Server Object Explorer, and it's the server name here. We also need to add the database name as well, and there's a couple of other settings. You can copy and paste this from the YouTube video description. Next, we need to create our DB context. We can do it in the infrastructure project, so we're going to right click on it and go to add and new items. We're going to call it round the code EF Core DB context. We're going to mark the class as public and we're going to implement the DB context class. We can grab this from the Microsoft.Entity Framework core assembly. We now need to set up a constructor. So within the constructor, we need to pass in a parameter which is of type DB context options and we pass in the DB context name as the generic type. I'm going to name it as options, and we also need to pass it through to the base class. This ensures that we can pass our connection string into our DB context. Afterwards, we need to add our DB context into our ASP.NET Core Web API. To do that, we go into the program.cs file, and in builder.services, we call add DB context. We pass in the class of the DB context, which is round the code EF core DB context as a generic type, and we need to pass in some options. Within the options, we need to call use SQL Server, and we need to pass in the connection string. So for that, we can call builder.configuration, get connection string, and we use the same connection string that we set up in appsettings.development.json, which in this instance is round the code EF core DB context. Finally, we want to make sure that we can connect to our database. After we've created our web application, we can create a new scope. So we're going to do that. We're going to call app.services.createScope. We can now get an instance of our DB context. So in order to do that, we call scope.serviceProvider, get required service, and we pass in our DB context. This gets it from dependency injection via the IOC container. We can now do a check, so we're going to call dbcontext.database.canConnect. If we can't connect to it, we're going to throw it an exception. So we're going to throw a new not implemented exception, and we're going to state the message as can't connect to db. If it goes to here, if it throws this exception, the application won't run. So let's see if our application is going to run. We can see the application is running, so that must mean that our database is connected. Watch the next part to continue learning about Entity Framework Core. And if you want to watch any video in our Get Started with EF Core course, check out the playlist at roundthecode.com slash EF course. There is also a link for it in the YouTube video description.